You're watching the New Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Single Store empowers the world's makers to build, deploy, and scale modern intelligent applications on the only database that allows you to transact, analyze, and contextualize data in real time, elevating human lives. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, Features Editor of the New Stack. And today we're going to talk about uh, building a tech stack for enterprise uh, generative AI apps and services. And uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the most popular LLMs, uh, large language models, and how to effectively use them. Um, we're also uh, going to talk about a forthcoming uh, conference um, on uh, real-time AI. Um, and uh, the person who's going to be joining us to talk about all that is uh, Madhar Kumar, who is Chief Marketing Officer of Single Store. Hi, Madhar. Hi, Heather. Nice to meet you, and thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, so. Uh, before we get started, I just we just want to thank Single Store for sponsoring today's conversation, and talk a little bit about uh, Single Store's uh, conference called Now Single Store Now, real time AI conference in uh, San Francisco on October seventeenth. Uh, Madhar, do you want to talk us tell us just a little bit about about um, what people can expect at that? Yeah, absolutely. So on October seventeenth at the Chase Center. Um, which is a really good location in San Francisco, we are all getting together. And for one full day, we will have an action-packed agenda, which is basically we will go through the entire you know, lessons of how to build out a generative AI application from scratch, but for an enterprise, specifically for you know mostly mm -hmm. B2B and B2C companies. And we will have speakers from all the hyperscalers, also speakers from open source community like Harrison Chase and Stan Gerard. And the entire day we'll spend just learning about how to build generative AI application, but using a vector database as well as, you know, a, what we call as a contextual database in single store. Sounds great. And sounds sounds like there'll be a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities to learn about generative AI and, and how to use it at that conference. And let's just dig right into talking about um, generative AI. Now we've heard a lot about it in the last year since uh, Chat GPT uh, yeah. uh, three uh, was unveiled. Uh, what? How is? How is? Can you put us in context? Like, how is generative AI different from the AI we've been we've been accustomed to? Yeah, I think it has been uh, quite a game changing changes since I would say November of last year when OpenAI released, as just like you said, ChatGPT. But prior to that, uh, there were some already some talks about things like DALI, which was generating images based on text. And then, of course, just the model itself, what it could do. In general, when we used to talk about AI, it was mostly around machine learning. In a sense, you build your machine learning model, you do a lot of training, different kinds of training. And once the model is done, it was primarily about predicting. Mm -hmm. predicting, uh, you know, for what could the stock price be and things like that. What is different about this one is that generative AI, it was supposed to predict the next word of anything that somebody said. And that's where it started off from. But what people start to realize is that when you do the next word and the next word and the word after, it actually comes up with a pretty coherent and a pretty cogent response which is not just syntactically true, but it's also semantically true. Mm -hmm. So, but when you were asking questions, it was not giving you the answers that we as humans were looking for. So I think the next thing that OpenAI did, which was a uh, which brought us where we are with generative AI today, is they use reinforcement learning with human feedback, our LHF, but they also retrained or trained the large language model to respond to queries by giving it training data that had queries and responses and some sort of a reward system if the responses were correct, then you caught that. And that's what's different about generative AI versus all the machine learning and all the AI that we used to call in the past. And so developers now can can use these large language models to, um, to 
to can train them to to generate responses that they need to to help solve problems. Um, let's talk about some of those lang- large language models. Um, do you want to go some of the you we we've published this, an article on our site um, which you talked about some of these and we'll link that to that in the article that accompanies this. Um, but just sort of, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the, some of the most popular ones and how, how they might be, um, used? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, uh, there's this, if I were to, before I get into the five most popular or the best Mm -hmm. large language models, maybe we divide the universe into two categories. One is the, uh, open source community, mm-hmm. and then the other one is what let's just say commercial. And in the commercial, of course, there is GPT-4 from OpenAI, and then of course there's DALI and others, uh, Whisper, and so on. But GPT-4 is kind of the gold standard for large language models, so to speak. Now, one could argue, and then you know people have talked about it in the past, is it's probably not just one large language model, but it's maybe a connected set of large language models with a very large number of parameters, you know, very intelligent engineering design. So there's that. And then there is Anthropics Claude 2, which is also pretty well regarded. And then, of course, there's Google, which is Palm 2. And then, of course, uh, Llama 2, which was released by uh, Meta or formerly mm-hmm. Facebook. And then open sourced is I would say front and center on the open source side of things. Mm-hmm. We also have to take into account all the image, text to image and text to audio as well. So stable diffusion is one big one over there. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. But I would say if we look at what large language models can do, it's at the end of it, gen- it generates, it transforms, it translates, right? And using mm-hmm. that, you can translate languages, you can translate text to audio, text to video, text to image, and so on. So in that sphere of thing, the ones that I just mentioned are the ones that we run into the most often. Now, okay. personally, for me, the one that I really like, and I'm still playing with it, is a large language model called Gorilla, which is trained on APIs. So it generates and gives you APIs based on what you're trying to do. So that's that's a very slightly niche, but inside the open source community. So, how does how does single store use use uh, y- how how are they how, how are you using generative AI? Yeah, absolutely. So, if you think about the uh, large language models, they are in a way frozen in time in the sense that they've been trained on a set of data mm-hmm. because data gets generated by terabytes and petabytes every millisecond. So you cannot continuously train a large language model. So OpenAI, for example, or GPT 3.5, from what I've read, is trained on data till September of 2021, Mm -hmm. and it cost over $100 million, and it took a very long time to train it. So now, because it's frozen in time, if you ask the large language model, for example, who won the gold medal for curling, in Olympics of 2022, and you can try it in ChatGPT today and it will tell you that, oh, I'm not aware of it, I don't know. So what tends to happen is you now have three options to make it data aware in order to build your application. One is retrain it, which is like doing a lobotomy of the large language model and wiping the memory and retraining it. That costs millions of dollars and takes a very long time. The second one is fine tuning, where you give it a query and a response, but the fine tuning is mostly to change the behavior, not to give it more data. And the third piece, which has evolved in the last few months, is what is called in-context learning or real-time learning, or also known as retrieval augmented generation. Mm -hmm. And that's where single store and vector databases come in. So let me explain. Okay. What I mean by that is, let's say if you ask a large language model that doesn't know about your company data, then what you can do is in real time, before you talk to the large language model, you take the user query, then you go back to your corpus of data with an enterprise, you search for it, and then you say, okay, here's some data, and that is called context. That context is 
uh, now turning out to be very big. Like it used to be only a few characters. Now you can literally create an entire book in real time. Mm-hmm. Then you hand it over to the large language model and say, now please answer this question. It's like an open test book, uh, open book test. And uh, But give me only answers related to this. So that also kind of put guardrails around hallucination, which I'm sure you have heard of. Mm-hmm. So in order to curate the data in real time and turn it into context for large language model, you need data that is stored as vectors. You need data that can store both SQL and NoSQL or your database. And you can do all of that in milliseconds. And that's what single store is. So single store is a database which is a, started off as, as in memory, but now you can use it in disk as well as on object storage. But the differentiation is that it also has vectors and vector functions. So you can do semantic search as well as lexical search. You can join all kinds of data and it's all in milliseconds, which makes the AI in real time. We'll wrap up with that, and we appreciate it very much. Um, this is uh, just want to thank uh, uh, Madhikar Kumar from Single Store for joining us today, and uh, we'd like to thank Single Store for for sponsoring today's conversation. Just a reminder about uh, Single Store Now Real Time AI Conference on October seventeenth in San Francisco, and this has been uh, Heather Joslin for the New Stack Makers. We'll see you next time. If you like this video please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.